We sound like broken records for saying it, but once upon a time, the C-Class, the sedan, was the most important vehicle in the Mercedes-Benz stable. And certainly in Australia, that's not the case anymore because as we know, everyone's moving to SUVs. So it's this vehicle, the GLC, which is the very important cog in the Mercedes-Benz wheel in this country. It's important for owners that are new to the brand, and it's also important for existing owners that might be in an A-Class that are stepping up into a larger vehicle. Here, we're taking a look at the GLC 200 and 300 at the local launch. Time to take it for a drive. At launch, we tested the GLC 200 and the GLC 300. Both have four-cylinder engines with nine-speed automatic transmissions. The 200 makes 145 kilowatts, 320 newton meters, gets from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.8 seconds, and uses 7.8 liters per 100 kilometers. The 300 makes 190 kilowatts and 370 newton meters, gets from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 6.2 seconds and uses 8.1 litres per 100 kilometres. Mercedes-Benz has recognised that design is important. Innovative driver assistance systems are also important with buyers and the latest generation infotainment system is something GLC buyers want. It also needs to have generous, flexible space for every circumstance and Mercedes-Benz also said it needs modern, fuel-efficient engines. Highlights include new styling, new wheel designs, while two and 300 both get new engines. There's a wide range of chassis options, standard adaptive steel springs and air suspension. The MBUX platform is new for GLC. The driver assistance package is standard. Traffic sign assist is standard. And Mercedes Me Connect is now also standard. Our only negative after testing the GLC on country roads in Victoria is that the ride can still be a little firm, but that's what buyers seem to want when they're buying a European luxury SUV. So somewhat unsurprisingly, it's a pretty impressive effort from Mercedes-Benz, the updated GLC. And what's most important for me is that you don't really feel like you're missing anything if you go away from the all-wheel drive model or you buy the 200 as opposed to the more expensive 300. And that's an important factor for buyers who can't afford to stretch to a bigger budget. It doesn't feel like you're getting a less premium experience. Stay tuned to caradvice.com when we get the GLC into the garage for more extensive testing. And in the meantime, like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, and follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel.